Hey, what's going on YouTube? Son of Sanguinius here, and today in this video we're going to be taking a look at the unit profiles and the weapon profiles that Games Workshop has announced on their Facebook page, and you can find the articles on the Warhammer community site under the Warhammer 40,000 tab. And there's some pretty interesting stuff, I'm going to be reading through it here, and uh, if I remember I'll probably leave a link down in the description below. So first we're going to start with the unit profiles, so the article begins with today is a big one guys, we're talking about how profiles are going to work in the new edition. The profiles for the current version of the game have been a part of Warhammer 40,000 for a decade now, and for the most part they worked pretty well, though there were always a few anomalies or things that didn't work quite as you'd expect. In the new edition, the rules team were keen to have the to have the profile work harder to better distinguish between the different units, so that, for example, for example, Eldar will run faster than Guardsmen and Hormigants will run faster than both. So already we're just sort of getting like a couple of hints at some of the movement stats. Um, as we will see later on, Space Marines uh, will move six inches. I would imagine that Eldar would probably move something like six or seven. And guardsmen maybe five or four, and hormigons they might you know creep up to, gosh I don't know maybe seven eight nine you know who knows we'll have to wait and see. So uh, they say here one big change is vehicles. These will now use the same profile system as everyone else, and you'll see though, uh, or as you'll see though, their stat lines are much above what you might expect from a standard infantry trooper. Wounds, for example, are not capped at 10, so don't be surprised if you see larger vehicles like Land Raiders and Imperial Knights with dozens of wounds. This means that there is no differentiation between monsters and vehicles, so you now have a standard system to compare between, for example, a Carnifex versus a Dreadnought. Speaking of Carnifexes, large monsters like them will also have a lot more wounds now. There are also no super heavy vehicle rules as such. With the stats going above 10, the system uh, is now at an increasing scale, which means models that previously fell just shy of super heavy status, the Gorkonaut, the Gorkonaut for example, can now punch at the appropriate weight and become much more survivable. Uh, so then they say, you know, further ado, and they say they have um, four examples um, from Codex Space Marines. So the first one we got here is the Tactical Squad. And uh, it just says name, Space Marine. Movement is 6 inches. Weapon skill is 3 plus. Bless a skill, 3 plus. Strength, 4. Toughness, 4. Wounds, 1. Attacks, 1. Leadership, 7. And a 3 up armor save. So the interesting thing to note here is A, the movement at 6 inches. Frankly, I kind of thought that they were going to have Space Marines move at 5 and have uh, Eldar move at 6, but. Um, uh, I guess they're uh, they're just, they're trying to keep uh, you know Space Marines being the standard. So um, ultimately, I don't think six, six inches is is like a ridiculous uh, ridiculously fast for a Space Marine. I mean, they are what like you know eight to ten feet tall, striding in power armor. I, mean, I could see six inches. I think that's that's uh, better than what I expected, and I don't think that it's necessarily you know um, overpowered or out of um, out of character for a Space Marine to have six inches of movement. So the one thing that I would note here is uh, their leadership has been brought down to seven. Um, now I could be wrong, but I'm almost exactly positive that Space Marines in seventh edition have leadership eight. I'm just checking right now. Da, 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 da. Yep, Space Marines uh, have had Leadership 8, I'm looking in the Codex now, and then Veterans have had 9. So this is kind of interesting. I wonder if, perhaps, based on their new morale system, they figured that it would be best to have Space Marines, and I would imagine pretty much everybody brought down at least by 1 uh, as a way to better... Uh, as a way to make morale a much more involved thing, so to speak. So, on one hand, I... If they're giving that treatment to everyone, then okay, but I don't really... I don't really like the fact that, you know, obviously, uh, my opinion's a little biased here, but I don't really like the fact that Space Marines have been brought down in leadership by one, but hopefully, um... Everything else has been brought down to compensate with that change. 
So uh, that's basically it for the tactical squads, and now we're going to move on to the Dreadnought. So uh, Dreadnought movement is 6, weapon skill 3+, plus, ballista skill 3+, plus, strength 6, toughness 7, wounds 8, attacks 4, leadership 8, with a 3-up armor save. Alright, so this is pretty pretty interesting, actually. Um, so, uh, 8 wound dreadnoughts. Uh, that's that's pretty pretty impressive there. And toughness 7, you know, they're not the toughest things ever, but they do have a 3-up armor, so... Uh, it's nice to see that I think dreadnoughts will be accurately, you know, represented in this new system. And it's also kind of nice to see that um, this, this doesn't appear to be too overpowered from what I'm seeing. Uh, it, it, ju it seems just right. Uh, to me. So now they move on to uh, two more paragraphs of text here. Uh, you'll see the stats are still recognizably Warhammer 40,000, but with just a few changes. We've gained a movement stat in exchange for a initiative stat. With charging units now striking first, movement and coordination of your assault army becomes a big factor. You can also see that weapon skill and ballista skill are now standard roles. Ballista skill sort of always was, though you can expect modifiers to both of these stats from in game effects. Strength and toughness are still with us, and still use an opposing value principle, so much higher strength will wound on a 2+, plus, low strength will wound on a 6+, plus. and these aren't capped at 10 anymore either. Wounds is a big one. Expect a lot of models to get more of these. As you can see here, uh, the Terminator has twice what he has now, and Gilliman has more too, so we'll go into those right now. So, uh, Robot Gilliman, uh, movement 8, Weapon skill 2+, plus, ballista skill 2+, plus, strength 6, toughness 6, wounds 9, attack 6, leadership 10, with a 2-up armor save. So, honestly, I haven't uh, really seen the Gilliman Data Slate 4 7th edition, so I can't really say too much here. Um, but uh, the fact that he has 9 wounds, 6 attacks, leadership 10, 2-up armor save, I would frankly expect you know nothing less of a Primarch. And uh, it looks uh, it looks pretty interesting. So, next one, uh, this one's kind of interesting too, is the Terminator Squad. So, movement five inches, weapon skill three plus, ballista skill three plus, strength four, toughness four, two wounds, two attacks, leadership eight, with a two up armor save. So, obviously, the two big things to take out of this for one is uh, movement has gone from 6 to 5, which makes sense thematically. I think Terminator should be, you know, a little bit slower because they are, you know, fairly big and bulky. Um, and so I'm totally fine with that. Makes sense. And the other thing, too, is uh, there are two wounds now, so that is very interesting. And I kind of feel like they should, uh, they should have that as well. Uh, just being, you know, the fact that uh, the Space Marines are far more resilient in Terminator armor as they are in power armor. So just to finish up this one article here, it says, Don't worry though, stuff still dies quickly, with powerful weapons dishing out multiple damage with each hit. Uh, but you will, as always, need to shoot the right gun at the right target to get the best effects. Uh, so there you have it, blah 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 blah. And uh, that's pretty much it for the Unit Profiles article. So now moving on to the next one. Uh, it's called New Warhammer 40,000 Weapons. And it begins by saying, Yesterday we took a look at unit pro uh, profiles of units in the New Warhammer 40,000. But that is, of course, only half the story. The other half is the weapons they wield, like units. These have had some pretty big changes, but are still recognizably the weapons you know and love. So let's take a look at three classic examples, the Iconic Bolt Gun, Flamer, and Last Cannon. So uh, these are look like they're in a section called Range Weapons, uh, so let's start with the Flamer. Uh, range, 8 inches, Assault, uh, or Type, Assault D6, Strength 4, AP 0, Damage 1, and Abilities, it says this weapon automatically hits its target. So as uh, has been going around for a while, it's been speculated, uh, GW is getting rid of templates. So there's no more Blast templates and there's no more Flamer templates. So um, this is kind of cool because I always found it kind of tricky to get my uh, Heavy Flamer model in a position where he could, you know, flame the enemy without, you know, getting the other guys. And hey, the Flamer now has a range of 8 inches, which I'm pretty sure was bigger than, uh, than the template itself was. And uh, its type is Assault D6, uh, so it does D6, um, uh, it basically gets, you know, D6 auto hits when you shoot it, so that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing, too, with this uh, profile for the weapon is they have AP, 
uh, which these are basically, you know, negative armor modifiers that um, basically weaken your opponent's armor save, and then damage is also another one, so since blast templates and that kind of stuff are gone, uh, some weapons will do multiple wounds per hit, uh, but uh, they'll talk about that a little bit later. So next we have the bolt gun, range 24 inches, type rapid fire 1, uh, strength is 4, AP 0, and damage 1, abilities none. So this one was this one kind of took me by surprise because I was positive that the bolt gun was going to have a armor uh, uh, sort of like an AP of at least one, uh, just because that that sort of feels like it fits thematically. Um, I'm kind of disappointed in that, but I can. But on the other hand, I can kind of see like why they why they didn't, but. Um, to me, uh, this kind of makes the bolt gun feel just like, you know, a last gun with, you know, plus one strength to it. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see how it plays out in the new, uh, in the new edition. But um, I expected the, the bolt gun to at least have an, arm, uh, an AP of uh, minus one. But uh, be that as it may, maybe G uh, GW will change that. Who knows? Um, I'm sure that they will release some more info in the near future. And so lastly, we have the last cannon here, range 48 inches, type heavy 1, strength 9, AP minus 3, damage D6, with no special abilities. So again, uh, we see like it has the same strength, and then an AP, uh, uh, and then an AP of minus 3. So again, uh, you know, keeping in line with that, that AP system. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it works, you know, especially with things like... Um, uh, dreadnoughts and marines and stuff. The other thing too is the damage, how it does d6 damage per hit. Um, so instead of me explaining it, I'm basically just going to read the rest of the article because they go into how multiple um, or how weapons that deal uh, more than one damage per hit work. Uh, so it says, damage is a big change. This set effectively lets a single hit deliver multiple wounds to one model. So basically, what's that saying is the last cannon can't be used like a uh, like an artillery piece, right? So even though it does D6 damage, it only does that to uh, one model. So if you were to fire it into a squad of guardsmen or a squad of tactical marines, it would only deal one damage um, because its type is heavy one. Now you look back at the flamer, which is assault D6. Um, that does D6 hits on a unit, whereas the last cannon only deals one hit, and then whatever model it hits, it does D6 damage too. So um, I feel like it's a good thing that they sort of clarified that because some people were confused as to how you know multi wound damage was going to work, and you know does this mean like a last cannon works you know the same way as you know an artillery piece, uh, so on and so forth. So I will continue reading. Uh, this stat effectively lets a single hit deliver multiple wound, multiple wounds to one model. Uh, so as you as we can see, the bolter does a single wound per hit. So it is optimized for shooting models that have a single wound themselves. Whereas the last cannon, one of the most powerful man portable weapons in the game, kicks out D6 damage, allowing it to blast chunks off of large vehicles and monsters and kill light vehicles and characters in a single hit. Against something like Guardsmen or Orcs, though, this formidable damage output will be wasted. The AP system is changing, too. Rather than a binary yes-no on saves, the new Warhammer 40,000 uses modifiers. The last cannon will punch uh, easily through power armor, while the Bolter and Flamer are, again, best deployed against less durable, more numerous targets. Lastly, you can see that the Flamer no longer uses a template, however, when in range, it causes D6 hit that you do not have to roll to hit. And this applies even against units of a single model. This can be devastating, especially when used in large numbers. Cough, burn a boys, cough. <laughs> Trust us uh, when we say that we may be entering the age of the Flamer as the go-to special weapon of infantry squads, the galaxy over, let the galaxy burn. And just finishing up the article here, the rules team behind the new game have taken the opportunity to rebalance a lot of the weapons in the game, and with the new armor modifier system and removal of the cap of 10 on strength values, we've made sure that every weapon has its use on the battlefields of the 41st millennium. D weapons, for example, are gone, and instead there is a uh, scalable strength and damage that matches the effectiveness you'd expect from every weapon. So. 
Um, overall, I'm fairly pleased to see what they're doing. Um, like I said, I think like the only downside for me is that I would have expected the bolt gun to have an armor, uh, an AP of minus one, but um, even with that caveat in there, uh, I think it's I, I, I think it's uh, okay. You know, like I said, we're gonna have to wait and see. You know how they handle the rest of the weapons and. Even though the armor mod, even though the AP of, of the bolt gun is is zero and not minus one, I feel like you know Space Marines will still be in a good place, uh, judging from what we've seen so far with this new addition. So anyway, that's all I got for this video, guys. I'm very curious to see what you have to say down below in the comment section. Feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video.